Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and today is going to be a very different video but I think an important one because today we're going to be talking about the Wacom EMR technology, trying to demystify it, explain what it is, how it works, bust some myths, commonly accepted myths about the technology, how things are done and what works, what doesn't work, etc, etc. I firmly believe that knowledge and understanding is power and freedom and therefore that's why I'm making a video like this. So let's begin. So let's start from the very basics. What is EMR? What does it stand for? Well, EMR stands for electromagnetic resonance. Basically, a combination of sensors, control algorithms, and fast data transmission enables the EMR technology to actually deliver a very, very good or an excellent handwriting experience that can mimic or in some cases rival the tactile feel of writing with pen on paper. Now this technology has been originally conceived and developed by Wacom and in its core it relies on principles of electromagnetic induction for an interface between the device and an EMR pen to occur. So both of them are interacting by using the electromagnetic induction. Now Wacom held exclusive patents for the EMR technology for a very long time but Somewhat recently, um, the technology has now been embraced by other big manufacturers. So it's a really exciting thing to see that this is starting to expand slowly. But still, if we're talking about EMR technology, we are essentially still today talking about Wacom EMR technology. How does the EMR, Wacom EMR technology actually work? Well, it consists and depends on a couple of things. So the number one thing is that when you read specifications of an e-ink device and it says it has a Wacom layer, that means that it has basically a grid of wires that is set behind or beneath the screen itself. And this grid of wires is basically a grid of horizontal and uh, vertical wires that create this grid. Now the second part or the second ingredient for the EMR technology that it uses a specific pen which has a magnetic coil. Now when you have those two grid itself, the grid on the screen on the device, it resonates at a specific frequency and that way it creates a magnetic field that extends about five millimeters beyond the surface of the screen. The pen, on the other hand, its magnetic coil modifies the resonant frequency of the device slightly depending on the action that's being performed. So when the pen approaches the screen, the grid behind the screen detects a modified signal in specific wires or sections of the grid and then this in turn allows the precise positioning of the pen on the screen. It's important to understand that this is not a binary type of detection, it's not a simple on and off interaction. Because there is a magnetic field, there are several ways uh, that the grid and the pen coil can actually interact with each other and that allows for multiple sophisticated functionalities to be employed by this powerful technology. Now, one of the key signature things about the e Wacom EMR technology is that when you're using a pen, a EMR pen, it doesn't have a battery and it's seemingly not powered by anything. It's powered by elves or magic. How is the EMR pen powered? Well, contrary to the popular beliefs, EMR pens are not powered by magic, air, nor fairies. Nope. In fact, the EMR pen is powered by your device itself wirelessly. So both the pen and the device have two separate simple circuits. The device generates an alternating current or AC that flows through the inductor coil. The change in current of the AC induces a current in the coil of the pen when it's close enough to interact with that five millimeter field that we've talked about. And that way the device itself or the grid of the device delivers the power to the pen coil without the need of wires or batteries in the pen. Now, we also need to talk a little bit about inductors when we're talking about this technology. So what is an inductor? Inductor is a coil of wire that basically stores energy 
in a magnetic field, basically acting like a temporary, super temporary, momentary battery. So it manages to store energy for a very short amount of time. So that is in fact the inductors are what makes this functionality possible. So now we have inductor and capacitor circuits and that is the main element of the EMR functionality. Inductor in the device and coil in the pen work as a single system. So when the pen is momentarily powered by the device, the inductor in the pen stores the energy in its magnetic field, which leads to resonance. Now, depending on the action that's being performed, there will be a slight modification in inductance and capacitance, which basically produces a different resonant frequency. This whole thing of how the pen is powered, that's the main reason why it's a really bad idea to leave an EMPAR pen on the top of your device's screen. Because even if the device is in sleep mode, unless it's specifically in, made in the system, it can happen that the grid itself will detect the pen the coil and then it will think hey I need to power you and pen the power perpetually which in turn will drain your device's battery. One of the key strengths of EMR technology beyond the magic power is the ability to detect the pen position with great accuracy. Now, this is achieved by interpolating the data received from multiple grid wires. So here's an example. If we have a four by four grid, and if the top left lines, both horizontal and vertical ones, receive the strongest pen signals, the device then will interpret that as, hey, the pen is located in the top left corner. And it can do that with quite a bit of precision because that grid is dense and really, really precise. Once it does that, then it goes through a process of considering weighted data from several grid lines around that area in order to actually pinpoint the pen position with great, great accuracy. So it's that grid of horizontal and vertical wires or coils that allowed the device to triangulate the pen's position fairly accurately. And when it does that, when and when the pen is in close proximity, the pen coil then interacts with the magnetic field of the screen or the Wacom layer, which then allows for precise pinpointing of the pen position. Now, this is possibly one of the most commonly and widely misunderstood concepts of EMR technology and the thing that has prompted me to actually make this video in the first place. So first, the debunking. Pen tilt detection on devices that use EMR pens is not detected nor dependent on the pen whatsoever, despite why some companies would want you to believe when they spew myths information in their marketing material and I'm looking at you, remarkable, yes. Pen tilt detection is entirely done by the device, or rather that same grid that does all of the EMR heavy lifting magic. So how does it actually work? Well, it's relatively simple, but really, really smart. So tilt information is made possible by one of those advanced calculation algorithms we've mentioned before. So what does it actually do? Well, that algorithm assesses the geometry of the EMR signals received over the multiple grid lines. And here in play comes the whole point that I said that this is not binary because we have fields uh, that are interacting with each other. You have various areas of influence and you can actually detect where the fall off is, how the intensity is, where's the peak of intensity, all sorts of really cool things. So how does it actually work? When a pen is held vertically upright to the screen, the signal geometry detected by the device or yeah, it appears round. When it's actually tilted, the geometry detected turns into an ellipse, which makes it possible for that area of influence, oops, um, uh, to basically take the area of influence and interpret not only the tilt angle, but also the tilt direction from it. So basically, if you were to imagine a circular field here, because that coil is not just one 
point, it actually has height. The circular, the field that it emits is not a perfect sphere. It's actually going to be more like a capsule. But when it's actually held vertically here, what, in, what basically intersects with the screen is going to be a circle. But because it's not a perfect sphere, because it's elongated, when you tilt it, that intersection is going to turn into that ellipse that we've talked about. So then your device is going to see an ellipse here, and then it can actually see, okay, this is the direction where it's going, because those grids on the, on the device are going to detect where the field is, and also, yeah, the surface area of that um, uh, ellipse is going to basically tell you how much of an ellipse it is or how much of an angle it is. So this is why any EMR pen will have tilt detection and can be used on devices that support tilt detection. A simple reason is it's because the device does all of the hard work not the pen. Now we get to one of the key functionalities of any EMR pen, and that is pen pressure. That functionality, in combination with how the device interprets the received data, can turn a writing experience into something that feels completely natural and, uh, frankly, wonderful to use, if calculated and calibrated correctly. In this case, EMR pens are the ones that are responsible for generating the pen pressure data. And they achieve this by using a nib that presses against a sensor rod that's within the pen. When the nib exerts pressure on that rod, it changes the inductance of the pen's coil. And that is the coil right here. And when that change happens, it again is altering that all-important resonant frequency. Now the tablet in itself re listens for these changes and then interprets these changes into pen pressure intensity, which is then used onwards by the system to control varying aspects of a brush, such as brush thickness, opacity, or whatever you may want to do, because once you do have that pressure in uh, 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 information in the system, then it's up to you as a developer to decide what you're going to do with it. This is also the reason why uh, the phenomenon of ghost writing can occur, because uh, if the nib is incorrectly seated, it can trigger the rod, the sensing rod, without the pen even touching the screen. But if the rod is touched, without any pressure exerted on a nib, then as soon as the pen's coil is within that five millimeter height of the electromagnetic field range above the device, then the device will effectively hear from the pen, I'm writing over here. And then the device was gonna say, oh, well, okay, I, I guess I better draw those lines then. That's basically what happens. And that's why the reseating of the nib and properly seating the nib is usually the thing that kind of helps it because it's a purely mechanical thing. Is it is the nib already touching the rod or not? And how are they interacting in a default state? Now, it's also important to mention that there's a spring mechanism here and it's usually located at the end of the pen driver. But uh, this has absolutely nothing to do with the pen pressure detection. Why do we have that spring? Well, that spring is there uh, only to allow for a more comfortable and natural feel when writing because most of the times these devices will have a hard surface screen like glass and if the pen has no give when the pressure is applied that will lead to a very very bad writing feel because it's going to feel super stiff and not natural at all so this way the pen actually absorbs the constantly varying pressure we exert on the pen while writing to give you a more authentic and more comfortable writing experience now, this aspect has to be carefully balanced with the way the device interprets the pen pressure, because now you have two variables, the pressure of the nib on the rod in the pen, so the, the actual pen pressure, and then you have the spring amortization of the pen. And if these two are not carefully calibrated, the resulting pen pressure may come off to the user as feeling too hard, not responsive, or too soft, or too responsive, or something like that. There's also one final thing to take into consideration, which 
actually makes the pen pressure the most complex uh, area to nail right in this whole story. And there's also the hardness of the nib material used that needs to be considered. So it's something that's going to change how the pen pressure is being interpreted by the device and the user. All of this makes pen pressure a complicated yet delicate balancing game to get it right. Finally, EMR pens often have extra buttons as a functionality that offers additional functionality such as erasers or programmable function buttons. How do these buttons work? Well, these buttons simply introduce a frequency, amplitude or phase modulation of the electromagnetic signal. So by al altering these signal parameters, the device can then recognize these changes as specific button presses. So this also has to be properly implemented or you will have inconsistent results. A good example of this is the recently improved eraser, function eraser functionality on the Remarkable 2 tablet. So if you take any more demanding document or a notebook, something that has multiple pages, many strokes, something that's gonna kind of push the device a little bit harder to work, and then you start erasing content, you'll quickly see that you won't get the same result erasing if you uh, erase it by using the eraser brush and the nib, or if you actually erase uh, and use the eraser end of the pen. Now, when we have a situation like this, the document is working fine, the notebook is working fine, the device is capable of doing that because uh, if you select the brush, that's also working fine, and then you use the nib and it all works fine, the system is okay, right? The system functionality system can handle this, but when you flip it around and you use the eraser, that means that that interpretation of the signals coming off from the pen when using an external button, they are somehow not handled correctly or in the same way as the nib uh, or the front of the pen signals are handled. And therefore that gives the user a more inconsistent result or more inconsistent user experience. I hope that you found this video useful and informative. I tried to keep it like balanced technical enough so that people with technical inclinations can and curiosities can understand how this works and also approachable enough so that people without technical inclinations and uh, interests can understand how does this technology actually work and why I think that this is important. Well, first of all, it's so that you know how it works so that if you encounter an issue that you have a personal understanding of what's going on, how these things are working, and maybe you can troubleshoot it as well and that you don't depend on others that you can actually have this or maybe even share the knowledge with others to help them understand also this thing. And the second reason is there's quite a lot of misinformation and really strong attitudes and things like that which are basically based on just an opinion, not fact. And I felt that this area needed some fact-based content to basically kind of demystify these things and kind of put them in order and make it kind of uh, approachable and useful source of information for this topic. I hope that I succeeded somewhat in this endeavor. If I did, then I'm happy. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on My Deep Guide. Also, if you would like to support the My Deep Guide efforts um, and independence further, then head on over to the mydeepguide.com shop where you can find My Daily Organizer 2024, which is a hyperlinked PDF organizer file that helps you organize your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily organizing or personal or professional organizing needs, including journaling as well. And you can also find MMP, which is My Deep Guide Meeting Planner, which helps you centralize, simplify and organize all of your meeting planning needs. If either of those sounds interesting, check out the linked playlist in the description below where you have a collection of videos that describe what all of these products are about, what they can do, what they can't do, and if they fit your needs or not. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.